Chris and writes for Lake Business Magazine. An Eagle Scout, Commissioner Parks serves scouting, volunteering, and teaching merit badges. He also serves education in Lake County as a board member of the Educational Foundation of Lake County. Commissioner Parks is a member of the Board of Director for the Buses and Backpack Program, serving Lake County children in need and volunteers for the Boys and Girls Club of Lake and Sumter Counties. He has served in Rotary and Kiwanis and is an active member of the South Lake Chamber of Commerce. Commissioner Parks has a bachelor's degree in environmental science and a master's degree in engineering management from the Florida Institute of Technology. He is certified as an urban and regional planner by the American Institute of Certified Planners and is a qualified environmental professional. Commissioner Parks was elected in 2004 to the Lake County Water Authority. Commissioner Parks strongly believes in exercising servant leadership and actively listening to residents' concerns. He holds at least one open outreach meeting a month called Coffee and Conversations in South Lake County, providing an opportunity for residents to meet one-on-one -on -one in a casual setting in a local restaurant. You probably have to buy your own food, though. I don't know that. I have to buy coffee. Now. Okay, there you go. That's decent. An ardent leader and supporter of economic development and business-friendly initiatives, Commissioner Park's interest in serving the citizens of Lake County also focuses on public safety, parks and recreation, and water resources. Commissioner Parks championed the cause to bring competitive rowing to Lake County and is passionate about the Wellness Way Plan for bringing high-wage jobs to Lake County while protecting our quality of life. Please join me in welcoming Sean Parks. This must be the football crowd, the college football crowd, because this is ground zero for March Madness. And uh, how many Gator fans do we have in here? The Gators pulled it off, right? 15 points. Okay, all right, get that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get finished so we can go catch Florida State. We'll catch Florida State at 9.30 tonight, so. It's all right, they don't have to face Vanderbilt. I think they lost. It is, it is an honor to be here. <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner Parks, we'll have to resolve this argument first. I go back. I should have my bracket. I should have my bracket. I realize I, 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 you know, I thought, now they won't be interested in that, but you might be interested in my bracket. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I am, uh, I'm happy and I'm, I'm really uh, pleased to be here. And, and I take that outreach thing very serious and, and try to listen and or not try it. I listen. And, and uh, that means a lot to me. So this is a great opportunity. What? I thought we would do is, uh, is start out by uh, giving a presentation, and really the bio, I appreciate the bio, but we've got an impressive uh, impressive, impressive uh, public servant and professional here in Robert Chandler, who is, uh, leads us for economic development, because this county commission takes economic development very serious, very seriously. And Robert, uh, I thought well, this would be a great opportunity to do a very whirlwind tour of, or a presentation, if you will, of the local economy. <clears throat> we rely on, as the commission commissioners, we rely on Roberts and his team uh, to collect data, and we have to make those. We need that data to make the budget decisions and try to, you know, plan the long term as we can. And so Robert, uh, Robert does that for us. He does a great presentation. He can do this quickly and uh, get through it, and then hopefully you'll. You'll feel good, mostly good. The news is generally pretty good. I like it. I and you know, feel free, of course, to ask questions. And then what I what I uh, had thought that we would do uh, after that is I'd like to tell you what some hot issues are right now at the county commission. Those those include the county manager search. We're right in the middle of the county manager search, and so I would like to actually get your input after you hear maybe my thoughts about. I'm, what I'm looking for, the, the qualities, the characteristics. The EMS audit, the, the, the combination of the Lake County Fire and Rescue and our Lake EMS, that audit, the results are in on that. Um, the the uh, report, um, 
that was recently presented to the Lake EMS Board. I'd like to share a little bit about that as well with you. The Impact Fee Waiver Program, uh, the Infill Program as it's also called. Uh, Commissioner Campione has uh, uh, presented uh, and done a lot of research over that and has made some good presentations, most recently to the school board. And so I'd like to maybe cover that a little bit. Better, intergov better intergovernmental coordination, something I think you should be aware of uh, that has kind of caught my attention lately between the cities and the county. The budget process, want to fill you in on that, so hopefully encourage you to be a part of that. And then maybe we can wrap up with uh, House Bill 17. That's something that would affect your local communities as well. So I want to turn it over to Robert. This is going to go real fast. It'll be fast and furious. Kind of like the Gators uh, full court press, right? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Can everybody hear me? I'm not much of a yes. podium guy. Um, let me get this presentation up and running. Graphs are a lot better than you can see them. I've been in this position for five years. I'm a Lake County native, grew up in Leesburg, went to Leesburg High School, so this is a job that I both take very seriously and am very passionate about because it gives me an opportunity to actually give back to the community where I grew up. So I left for 10 or 15 years, came back, and I've been in this role for about five years. So the presentation I'm going to give today is uh, an overview of the Lake County economy and what we're anticipating coming our way, what our uh, economy kind of looks like today, as well as to give you an idea of how we're approaching economic development. And keep in mind, my, my department uh, is economic development and tourism, so I'm not really even going to touch the tourism side, but we also handle building and planning as well. So about two years ago, the county made the decision to put all those divisions together, economic development, tourism, building, and planning, to make sure there's a more seamless approach to growth and development in Lake County. Uh, I believe overall it has had a good impact on both the building side and the planning side and, and being able to seamlessly interweave them into what we're doing on the economic development side. So the title of my presentation is Real Florida, Real Growth. For those that don't know, about three years ago the county adopted a new slogan, Real Florida, Real Close. And I'll get into what that means later, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. But uh, for the purposes of this, the real growth is something that we need to be paying attention to. So you can see here on this graph, on the far left, you've got 1970, 69,000 people living in Lake County. 2016, most recent number available, 324,000 people living in Lake County. That is quite an increase. When you look at five-year increments going back to 2001, you can see almost 100,000 new people have moved to Lake County since 2001. 323 to 220. That is pretty exponential growth. When you're looking at our ranking in the state of Florida for growth, these are the numbers. So we're the 19th largest county as of 2015, according to population. One-year growth, we were sixth. Five-year growth, 12th. Over 10 years, eighth. Since 1998, since 2006. So basically top 10 <coughs> growth in the state across the board, regardless of what time period you're looking at. Those are pretty significant numbers. Where are these people coming from? It's kind of important to just understand what the demographics look like and where the folks are coming from that are moving to Lake County. So this breaks it down based on how many are from Florida, how many are from a different state, and how many are foreign. So you can see over half, 58%, are from the state of Florida. It's not surprising. 41% from a different state, 1% are foreign, moving to Lake County. We drill down a little bit farther. Let's look at the sections of, Lake Ca of the state of Florida and where are they coming from. 87% of all the people moving to Lake County are from Central Florida. Second would be Southeast Florida. So you're looking down in the Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, Miami area. Then Southwest Florida, which would be Naples, Fort Myers, that area. Northeast Florida, the Panhandle, or I'm sorry, Jacksonville, Northwest, the Panhandle. Breaking that down even farther, almost 50% are from Orange County. These, these numbers aren't surprising, but it's just interesting to look at them in comparison to each other. Seminole County, Polk County, Marion County, so these are the four counties that we touch. Sumter, 8%, and then on down. So it kind of gives you a flavor of where the people are moving from that are coming to Lake County. Middle of this map right here is downtown Orlando. 
What we try to show here is from 2000 to 2010, where are the growth patterns coming from? When we look back at this, you can see 42% are coming from Orange County. Let's look at where those folks are moving to. So if you look at the different transportation corridors, I-4 to the northeast, 441 to the northwest, 50 and the turnpike out to the west, I-4 down to the southwest, and you've got 192 and the turnpike coming down to the southeast. 94,000 people moved out to the west. So that's basically Winter Garden and Claremont. And that's the number one area for growth of all of Central Florida. So when you look at this growth pattern from Orlando, regardless of what they do, regardless of what I do, regardless of the politics, this is happening. The people are moving to Lake County, and they're moving here in large numbers. Winter Garden was the number one city for population growth, actual number of people, not percentage growth, the actual number of people. Winter Garden was number one during this decade. City of Claremont was number two. So the growth is coming. Let's look at what that looks like over time. 2015, you can see we were at 316,000. You know, it's 323 in 2016. In 30 years, that number is going to go to 520,000. 200,000 additional people moving to Lake County. So a lot of those folks that have been here a long time, these numbers are striking and they're scary because the reason we all move to Lake County, the reason we love Lake County, is in a lot of ways because we don't have 520,000 people. So it makes it incredibly important for the political decisions that are made to make sure you're managing this growth effectively. On the ground, what does that actually look like? Here's housing units. 156,000 housing units in Lake County, 2015. To reach that 520,000 number, we'll need almost 250,000 housing units. So in general terms, it's 100,000 additional housing units to accommodate the people that are moving here. So anytime you hear about a, 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 a residential development coming online, you hear a thousand households, and you say, that is, that's too many households, we can't prove that. That's only 1% of the number of housing units we're going to need over the next 30 years. So it gives us some context. When you hear about Wellness Way, 16,000 housing units, sounds like a lot. It is a lot in one project. But those housing units are coming. They're going to have to come to accommodate that growth. So the goal is for the government, how do we manage that growth? How do we put the right restrictions in place? Or how do we put the right um, planning strategies in place to make sure that we're managing the growth efficiently and effectively and diversify? Which gets us to the next point. We're going to have all this population growth. What are we doing on the job side? We do not want to continue to be a bedroom community for Orange and Seminole counties. So let's start with the number everybody likes to look at, unemployment rate. This is going back to 2000. Unemployment rate, you get peaked up in the recession right after 2001, went down during the run-up, and then here we go, Great Recession of over 12% unemployment in Lake County. Now what you can see here is that number's been steadily, but pretty drastically declining over the last 8 to 10 years. What's interesting right here is this little click back up. Now all of this is seasonality, but you can kind of see that that trend down has stopped. And so the question is, why? Why has that stopped? And it's a pretty easy answer. What this looks at right here, the green bars represent the, lake, the employment. So it's the employment numbers. Those are the people that live in Lake County that have a job, regardless of where that job is. The blue line represents labor force. The same folks in Lake County that are looking for a job or have a job. So unemployment rate is the unemployed folks divided by labor force. In this case, what you can see here, what happens in the, when, in, in the bad times, when, uh, when the economy is not good and the unemployment rate starts dropping, what you'll hear is folks saying, see, things aren't as bad as we thought, the unemployment rate's dropping. And everybody knows it's funny math, right? Well, the funny math happens because labor force numbers go down. So if people start dropping out of the labor force, it's just simple math. That denominator goes down, your unemployment rate goes down. We're experiencing the exact opposite of that right now. What I've done here is I've flattened out, this is a 12 month moving average to get out the seasonality. Here you go, employment in the green, the blue represents labor force, and the red represents the unemployment rate. So you can see right here, unemployment rate is skyrocketing until that, here's 0% growth. So this is growth rates, okay? Year over year growth rates. When you see this green line drop below zero, this blue line drop below zero, that's why this flattened out. So here was a prime case for us to talk about, oh, the economy's not that bad, the unemployment rate stopped going up. It only stopped going up because the labor force was going down. You can see here, we were still losing tons of employment. 
Anytime that these bars are below this line, that means less and less people are being employed. So right here, you can see here's that flattening out that we talked about. Now we're experiencing the reverse side of that. Over the last, let's see, probably four to six months, the labor force increases have been as good as we've seen in well over a decade. So what that's doing is it's putting a, a floor on the, how far the unemployment rate can go down. So it's pretty simple math on this, but if you're going to look at the stats, the number one teller, at least for me, that I look for on what does the economy look like? What are the consumers and the residents? How do they feel about the economy? It's the labor force. Because people are starting to get excited. They're starting to realize I've been sitting on the sidelines. Now it's time to get back in the game and start looking for a job. So right now the unemployment rate's at 5.3%. It's a little bit above where we were last January. First time in about three or four years that the unemployment, unemployment rate has actually gone up year over year. But it's almost 100% because of this labor force. Because you can see right here, employment's going up. Employment's actually pretty strong right here, almost 4% increase. But when that labor force line starts shooting up like that, you're going to have a floor to how far your unemployment rate can go down. So you might start seeing the unemployment rate flattening out over the next few months. It's not because the economy stalled. It's actually the exact opposite. we got more people entering the labor force. Let's look at the average annual wage. This has been the one side of the economy in Lake County that's been keeping us down. Uh, for a very long time, we have been the lowest in the region in terms of average annual wage. You see back here in 2002, our average annual wage was 26000 Creeped up here, flattened out, and now we're starting to see it head back up. So for the first time, we're over 36000 for our average annual wage. We are still the lowest in the region. The average annual wage in Orange County is about 45000 46000 But what's impressive is that our increase... The average annual increase in wages is keeping up with the rest of the region and in many cases surpassing it. So you can see here, this is year over year increase in average annual wage. And the run up before the recession, almost 8% year over year gains. Just, just amazing, unsustainable numbers. Then you can see the recession here, wages actually drop. We bounced around at 1, 1.5% 1 for almost three years. And then the last four quarters, so the most recent data we have is September 2016. These last four quarters, you can see we're pushing up on 4% annual wage growth. Those are very, very good numbers and a great sign for what's to come here in 2017. So these are exciting numbers. Again, we're still the lowest in the region, but our growth rates are surpassing the region. So hopefully we're starting to make up that difference. Lake County payroll job creation. So at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. How many jobs are we creating in Lake County for all those people that are moving here? We want people to have a job, which goes back to employment, but we prefer for them to have a job in Lake County. So you can see, 2001, we had about 65,000 jobs. We peaked at about 85,000 in the recession, lost about 7,000, 8,000 jobs, and then we've just been gaining back every month through September 2016. So we're a little over 92,000 jobs in Lake County today. And again, let's look at the year-over-year -year numbers. The run-up before the recession, look at all the jobs we lost here in the recession. This is year-over-year -year annual growth. Negative growth rates here, bad. But this is what's impressive right here. For 14 straight months, we've had year-over-year -year job growth at over 4%. 4% is the number that we look for to have solid, sustainable growth in Lake County. 4% is something that, that, that's where we want to be. So as long as we're over that 4%, we're feeling pretty good about the job creation in Lake County. 14 straight months. So we're hoping that continues. So the last piece is when we're, when we're looking at jobs, and then we know we have all these folks that are coming in, are we keeping up the pace with the number of people that are moving in? Population growth is, is pretty substantial. How does that look compared to how many jobs are added? So we've got this metric called the jobs to labor force ratio. For how many people that are looking for a job in Lake County, how many jobs do we actually have? Before the recession, we were up at almost 0.7. For every 10 people looking for a job, we had seven jobs available for them in Lake County. Bottom of the recession, it dropped down to 0.58, and we've slowly been bringing that number back up. We're about a little over 0.64 today, so six and a half jobs for every 10 people that are looking for jobs. The sweet spot for Lake County is about 0.7. That's where we need to be. Seminole County, at the peak of the market, was at 0.75. Uh, they're at about 0.7 right now, so they'd like to get up some. If we can hit that 0.7 number, Lake County will be doing very well. So then let's look at the actual numbers. Here's the population in 2016. 
Here's how many jobs we have in 2016. If we just want to maintain the status quo, 0.64 jobs to housing ratio, or jobs to labor force ratio, we're going to need 129,000 jobs in 2030 and 167,000 jobs in 2045. It's about 40,000 more jobs and 80,000 more jobs, just to keep things status quo. So those are our goals. At 4% growth every single year, we get there pretty easily. We know we're not going to sustain that. But that's what we're looking for. That's the challenge that we have ahead of us from an economic development side, is over the next 15 years, how are we going to add 40,000 jobs to Lake County? If we want to reach our 0.7, we've got to add an extra 10. So we've got to hit 50,000 jobs in the next 15 years, and we've got to have about 90,000 jobs over the next 30. Those are the goals. That's what we're looking for in order to keep up with this population. The population growth is hard to contain. Growth pressures are what they are. This is the side right here that we've got to manage. We've got to be able to create the job opportunities locally to accommodate these folks so that we don't continue to serve as a veteran community for our surrounding counties. So how do we do that? What's economic development looking at? These are a number of areas. When people think about economic development, they think go recruit the next gun manufacturer. That's the flashy stuff. That's the sexy stuff. But that's only one small piece of what economic development is. It's the entire package right here. It's about targeting that business recruitment side. It's about infrastructure. What kind of roads do you have? What kind of parks do you have? What kind of quality of life do you have? It's about workforce. In Lake County, that's one of our biggest challenges, workforce. And I'll get to that in a second. Your education system, the skills trades. How are you producing the skills needed for the jobs that you're trying to recruit? It's about efficiency, customer service, business friendly. How is the political climate? How is the business climate? It's about support. What do you have for the businesses? How are you supporting your businesses, either through private sector or public sector means? And then it's also about product. What do you actually have? And that's a piece that a lot of people don't think about. Just go recruit this business. Well, you can't go recruit the business if you don't have a place to put them. So that's a big part of it as well. So I'll go through the three biggest areas that we're working on now and are really the biggest challenges. So one is targeting. How do we do a better job of, of finding those, those companies and bringing them here? Workforce, what are we doing to improve our workforce and product? With the number of projects that we're getting today, which in the last 12 months is probably double what we've gotten in any year, any 12-month period in the last decade. So the leads in Lake County are as high as they've ever been. And these are solid leads. These are the two areas where we find the biggest uh, struggles. So on the targeting side, know your brand. Real Florida, real close. That's who we are. Again, we all moved here for the reason, because we're real Florida. But it's also real close to everything you want. So it's real close to all the services in Orlando. It's close to the beaches. It's close to attractions. It's close to the services. Everything is here. Know the brand and sell the brand. Real Florida, we're the canoeing. We're kayaking. We've got birding. We've got fishing. All of those things on the ecotourism side. We have the small towns, 14 of them. Small town charm. All those things are great. Everybody loves it. That's why we moved here. And then we're real close. Again, 90 minutes to either beach. 45 minutes to Orlando, three airports, three ports, you name it, we're close to everything you need. Know who you are, know what industries you have. So we have four targeted industries that we're working on from an economic development side. The first one is healthcare. Obviously with the three hospitals we have being the largest employers, with the cluster of healthcare that we've got down in South Lake, around South Lake Hospital and the NTC, uh, with the companies like Vista and the Pure Clinic coming online, Healthcare is something that we need to continue to target and continue to focus on. Second is manufacturing. Most folks don't know it. 300 manufacturing companies over that now in Lake County. Our workforce in Lake County, 7% of our workforce is in manufacturing. The statewide average is 3%. So we've got the workforce here to fill the jobs. We just have to get the businesses here. Aviation and aerospace. We're sitting in America's Seaplane City. We've got an international airport right down the road in Leesburg. A lot of opportunities. These are some of the companies that are here today. And then finally, AgTech. Everything you got from Florida food products to Synager to AG3, Valenza. All these companies are here doing business in Lake County, and we need to continue to focus on that and build off of the clusters and the synergy that are already there. Workforce. Workforce is probably our 1A to maybe 1B struggle in Lake County. So how are we accomplishing are you know, trying to accomplish our goals on the workforce side. So the first, the Center for Advanced Manufacturing. I just talked about how manufacturing is a big part of our workforce. We've got the people, we just got to get them better trained. So this is, uh, we just did the uh, 
it wasn't a groundbreaking ceremony, it was a commencement ceremony because they're starting construction on the Lake Tech Center for Advanced Manufacturing at the Lake Tech campus in Eustis. This will be open by the end of the year and will be training CNC machinists, welders, and fabricators. We can customize programs for companies at the Center for Advanced Manufacturing. If you're a company that's coming in, if you're worried about the workforce, if you're looking at the labor pool in Lake County, you say it just isn't going to work for us, all right, we will set up a training program that will work specifically for you, and then you've got a direct pipeline of talent coming into your company. So that's going to be revolutionary, not just for Lake County, but all of Central Florida. Very excited about that. Lake Tech is doing some amazing things with training our workforce, and we're excited to be able to partner with them. Health Sciences Academy, for those that don't know, all these organizations here, Lake Sumter State College, South Lake Hospital, UCF, Montverde, and Lake County Schools have partnered on what they call a 222 program. Kids in their junior and senior year of high school who want to get involved in the healthcare industry can join this 222 program. They come in, they spend two years in junior and senior year, then they go to junior college, and then they go to UCF. All within six years, they come out with all the degrees, everything that they need to be able to go straight into the healthcare industry. We're going to try to duplicate that system throughout the county, not just the South Lake Hospital, but also bring it up here to the north as well. We started a workforce task force. It's the first time this has ever been done. It's pretty amazing that it hasn't been done. We have all of these folks, all of these entities that are working on workforce and education pieces in Lake County and had historically been doing it in silos. We bring them together quarterly and we all sit down and we talk about how can we better attack the workforce problem in Lake County and how can we look for partnerships and collaboration and innovation and focus to ensure we're all on the same page. So all these are things that are kind of moving the needle for us to get us closer to the workforce environment we need. On the product side, again, this is, this is a big overlooked piece of economic development. If you don't have a place to put a company, they're not going to come. It doesn't matter what your tax rate is. It doesn't matter how many incentives you offer. You don't even get to that part of the discussion. They're not even going to talk to you if they can't find a place. So, for example, right now, we have one building from 50,000 to 100,000 square feet in Lake County that we can put an industrial company in. One, down at, Central, at the Christopher C. Ford Commerce Park. Once that one's filled, we're done. We've got nothing left. So how do we incentivize <coughs> landowners, developers, business owners to either bring spec products or to put in the product we need? That's one of the questions we have to answer. We have no Class A office space in Lake County. Zero. So if you want to bring in a corporate headquarters, you can't do it right now if they want to move into an existing building. So working on the product side, trying to get those spec buildings or to get those office parks or industrial parks here is one piece of it. And the other piece is making sure you have the land ready to go in case somebody wants to build. Right now, we have most folks that are looking to move into existing buildings because it's far cheaper. But on the building on the land side, we're starting to work on some strategic corridors. So the first would be the Wolf Branch Innovation District, 1,300 acres, where the spur of the Wakaiba Parkway is going to come into State Road 46. As you know, that road should be done in probably two years. Once that road is done, this whole area is going to change. Mount Clemens Sorrento is not going to be the Mount Clemens Sorrento that we know today. And that decision was made when they decided to build the road. So when they knew that road was coming in, the way of life out here has changed, for better or worse. So this is a way for us to try to capture that job growth piece of it. 1,300 acres, the goal and the intent of this will be, and it is, it is almost 95% non-residential. There's hardly any residential entitlements in that 1,300 acres. You're looking at probably 3 million to 4 million square feet of non-residential healthcare office. There's going to be hopefully a school there uh, and some light industrial. Not a lot of retail and commercial, largely job generating. Think of International Boulevard over in Lake Mary. Think about Colonial Town Center. Think about uh, the Heathrow area. That's the intent for this piece. Second, you've got the 470 Commerce Park, which is at the intersection of 470 and the Turnpike, owned by the city of Leesburg. Now, why this is important is because it's municipal owned. And that's a big piece in economic development because since the city owns it, they can work with the developers a lot. We have more interest in this piece right here than we have anywhere else in Lake County today. Uh, already closed one big deal with a company called Force Lab, a concrete uh, fabrication company. They came, they're under construction now and have already put down a contract for 80 more acres. Uh, so that's going to happen here soon. Two more companies are coming in right next to them. Uh, this is going to be one of the hottest spots in Lake County, or is right now, and will continue to be with the right type of job growth that we're looking for. 
Second is the Mineola Interchange. Uh, that is almost done. That will be complete this summer. Around the Mineola Interchange, you're looking at about eight to 10,000 housing units, but more importantly, probably 4 million square feet of non-residential. This location right here, 30 minutes from downtown Orlando, a little over 30 minutes from the airport. That 30 minute number is very, very key with economic development. Businesses want to be within half an hour of the major airport. So this is, uh, this is going to be a game changer for South Lake County. Opening up access to the Orlando market, uh, the land there, they're doing it the right way. Now this is the flip side. So Wolf Branch Innovation District, it's all single parcels. So you've got a guy that owns 100 acres here, this guy owns 1,000 acres. You have 100 or so ranchettes of 5 to 20 acres. Somebody's going to have to come in and assemble all that land. Leesburg, one owner of the city of Leesburg, so government owned. This is two or three owners that are in the private side. So you've got three different situations, and the takedown strategies for these will obviously be different based on the ownership patterns. And then finally, Wellness Way, which is uh, 16,000 acres in South Lake County, south of Claremont, west of Highway, or east of 27, west of the line, matches up with what's going on at Horizon West over in Orange County. Uh, at build out, this is right now is just a planning exercise. So right now we're trying to get the planning side of it done. Uh, Remember, we talked about all that growth coming. So right now, this is basically rural lands, one to five. Uh, if we don't do anything, what's going to happen is this little piece here is going to sell. They're going to come in. They're going to get a comp plan change. They're going to go four units to the acre. Then this one's going to come in. Then this one's going to come in. And we'll just be leapfrogging four units to the acre development. It won't be coordinated. We won't have the right services. Next thing you know, the whole area is built out. You've got no job generation. It's difficult and costly to service. By doing this plan, we're capping the number of residential units, about 15,000, 16,000 units, and we're giving the opportunity for about 11 or 12 million square feet minimum, they can go higher, of non-residential uses. It has environmental protections in it, has roadway networks, all of the things that you need for proper smart growth uh, will be included here. Unfortunately, we're caught up in a legal challenge right now, we've been in this for about a year, and uh, if we can get that solved soon, hopefully we can get moving on this because growth in Horizon West is absolutely exploding. So every day that they continue to grow is a day that we're behind the eight ball on the Lake County side. So to kind of finish it up, uh, this side over here, so growth is inevitable. It is coming to Lake County. So it's incumbent on all of us to make sure that we're managing that growth. And on this side, you know, balance is critical. So balance in a number of aspects. We need to balance our residential with our commercial and non-residential. Uh, we need to balance our quality of life with growth altogether. Uh, so it's about diversifying the type of growth that's coming. It's about managing that growth. It's about making sure that the reason we all moved here in the first place will continue to be the case with the quality of life and the lakes and the, and the, and the nice area that we live in today. So that's kind of a summary of everything. I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Do you have a graph that shows the workforce growth and the non-workforce growth? Non-workforce being retirees. Well, I mean, it, it would be. I don't. I don't. I haven't specifically parsed out the non-workforce. I mean, the retirees. So you're saying retirees versus workforce? Yeah. Uh, I don't have that. No. What I do have, obviously, is the labor force, which we saw. Uh, yeah, so that, that would be the total. Do you know what it is right now? I, I do not know. Yes, sir. About 30 percent. As a native for I, I, I recall since the 60s and 70s, this area has been, a, we've had phosphate mines, we've had citrus, we've had some cattle, we've had yeah. uh, tourism, but most of all, the number one industry has been growth, built. Sure. And, and uh, reaching out and, and, and choosing whatever you want, what would you say would be the best industry, the best kind of growth that we can get here in the form of recruiting business? Well, I, I think there's there's two pieces. It's what do you want and what can you get, right? So you got you got so if it's and I, and I think actually both of those are the same right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's that uh, advanced manufacturing, that light industrial, and then on the other side, the healthcare. I, when when you look at the the industries we already have here, with the workforce we have here, the return on investment, I think we can we have a great opportunity to recruit to recruit both types of businesses, and. Uh, the return on those is, is very high from in terms of average wages. I mean, the average wages in these manufacturing companies is $50,000, $70,000. It's even higher with healthcare. Now, once you establish that, 
then you can start pulling in that Class A office space and those corporate headquarters because now you're starting to build up a critical mass where you can compete against Seminole County and downtown Orlando for those corporate headquarters. There used to be a number in economic development where uh, when a dollar comes to town, it'll stop six times, two sure. times before yeah. it leaves the market area. Right. So for every dollar you come, it's really worth eight or ten bucks. Sure. What is that number now for Lake County? Well, it depends on the industry. So those economic impact multipliers is what you're talking about. It's different for every single industry. So manufacturing is going to be one of your highest in terms of that respending because of the supply change and what, they, what they're spending. Healthcare isn't as great as manufacturing. Tourism is a great one. Uh, that money keeps getting spent. Uh, but I, it, it, depends, it depends on the industry. So I don't have any specific numbers. Generally, what we say from a tourism perspective is about two and a half. Whatever your regular spending is, multiply that by two and a half, three, and that will get you what the total economic impact is. That's a quick question. I thought what you did there was just a really outstanding PowerPoint presentation. But if I didn't know better, I'd say you work for the developer and not for the county. <laughs> I'm not so sure that this county has to grow at the rate you're stating. That's not, those aren't my numbers. Those, those are the University of Florida's numbers. They're not mine. Yeah, I, I'm they're sure he works for, he works for us. <laughs> this, this is my hometown. Works for you. So, I mean, and, but, that, but that's my point, is that yeah. we, we can say whatever we want, but we've got independent people that are looking at the, the numbers, and they're telling us, you know, unless you put a moratorium on growth, they're going to come in and they're going to find little pieces and they'll do the complex. We all know it. The developers will get what they want at the end of the day unless you get out in front of it. Yeah, and it, there's... I'm sorry, you were, you were next. Um, my question goes like, kind of like with Jerk. Yeah. When you're looking at numbers, which I love to look at, and I love the presentation. You. Um, but when you're looking at numbers, I think that as particularly here in this area, I think you have to look at who's coming. Sure. And how, where, what, what's driving that number to grow? And if I have corrected my thought that a huge percentage of that growth is going to come from a retirement population and a retirement age, mm -hmm. that kind of then throws a lot of those numbers off, I would think, in that if in fact 20% of the growth is going to come from retired people, then the job growth isn't going to be as high, but Correct. the services needs are going to are going to grow. That's that's absolutely true, and and that that's kind of built in that 0.64 number that I was talking about the jobs, the labor force. A lot of that's built into it, which is why one of the reasons we'll never get to the 0.75 or Seminole County is because they have a lower average. Our average age in Lake County is 45. Mm -hmm. Seminole County is like 34. Orange County is 35, 36, so you're, you're absolutely right. The demographic side of it are incredibly important to how many jobs you're creating and what type of people you're bringing in and what type of jobs you're bringing in. I mean, all that is factored in, but it's certainly something that we keep track of uh, because you got to make sure you're matching up what you're recruiting. And that's why health care is, is also a big piece of it. As that average age stays higher, the need for health care also stays high. Yes, sir. A couple of questions. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Where do you get your data from? I know you made reference to the University of Florida. But yeah, so population is Beaver, Bureau of Economic uh, and Business Research. Mm -hmm. uh, the employment and labor force and unemployment rates are the local area uh, unemployment statistics that are done by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You get them from Florida DEO. Same with the jobs and wage numbers. Those are from DEO and from the quarterly census of employment and wages. All that can be found directly online at Florida DEO or University of Florida for the Beaver numbers. Next question is, to whom is this presentation directed? Uh, whoever the commissioner it wants was, to <laughs> this, was, this was a presentation that was, uh, and Robert did real good uh, with the fast press, the fast press uh, offense here, sorry to put a basketball term in, and presenting all this, which is normally three hours, uh, or uh, maybe two, somewhere in that range, mm -hmm. to the county commission to a half hour tonight. Right. So there's, right? I mean, it's been, yeah, it's, I mean, and, and really, we ask for it, it depends on, I mean, this, this is just kind of yeah. a, a, a to, to get people to understand 
you know, the, the challenges that we have ahead of us, and, to, and then to let them know how we, as a, you know, as your government, are looking at it and what we're trying to do to, to manage that and, and to position ourselves in the, in the best way to be successful when all this growth comes. I don't think people sometimes realize the, the true numbers that we're looking at here in Lake County. It, it just, some of it's striking to me, you know, 100,000 housing units is a lot of housing units in this county. Uh, I, might, I might just mention, he does a quarterly report for the commission, mm -hmm. and it does go two hours maybe, yeah. a lot more detail, and I would suggest you go onto the county website if you want, or you can let me know, and I'll give you a link. Well, well the, the reason I ask is, is that there are two stakeholder groups that I perceive as being largely ignored that are critical to the success or failure of, of any economic development vision mm -hmm. that Lake County or any geographic region has. And, and one is the, the vested stakeholders, landowners, sure. okay, who, who have the capital investment, the assets that, that need to be uh, put into play. Right. And the other one is, is actually your workforce. And what's shocking to me is, you know, I, I've had school boards up here, they, they keep on saying, you know, we, we, we have talked to the parents, we have the teachers, we have the unions yada 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 they never have the students and from my vantage point if you get in front of students and make them finally connect and if this is a, a, a difficult request to make for anybody and that is getting young people at a suitable age young enough age that they understand that job one i mean that would be if i were to say in lake county i had to have one phrase Education is job one, mm -hmm. and that every parent, every church, every uh, civic organization, every government agency should be focused on this is the mantra that we re repeat to our children. They have no other function in life other than to be, be the best educated they can, and they need to know why, and this is the why that you have right here. Mm -hmm. You always have to be able to answer that question. Right. So you need to get into the schools so that at least a portion of them. In your spare able, time. Well, in your spare time, right. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm just urging. You're absolutely right. And that's why that workforce task force is important. And then we, we have an event, and I invite all of you to come to it, called, called Partners for Success. <clears throat> for those that haven't heard of it, we get all of the academies in the, in the schools. We get Lake Tech. We get Lake Sumter State College. We even have Beacon College there. Everybody presents, it's a kind of a reverse job fair where everyone presents what they're doing in their academy. So your construction academy will have a booth, your healthcare academy will have a booth, your welders will have a booth. And then we invite businesses to come to that to say, hey, if you're going to come work for me, these are the skills that I'm looking for, this is the attitude that I'm looking for, mm -hmm. and this is what you can make. You know, so you start making those, um, those connections between the students and they can actually see this, this, is what I, this is what I could be doing. And then we've also got a thing where you go around and you, know, you put up on the board, you know, you say, this is what a plumber makes, and you have the number of, of dollar signs next to it, and this is what a welder makes. And it's kind of eye-opening for some of the students because they're thinking, if I don't go to college, I'm done. And then you look at it and say, what, two years at Lake Tech for relatively no money, I could make $60,000? All right, now I'm, now I'm going to start getting my head back in the books. So there the, and that, like I said, workforce is, is a big part of our problem. So we've got to continue to work on that, not, not just the, the education, but then the whole, you know, from the K through 12, but also all the way through the skills training. Well, because I know my contemporaries at Eustace High School, when I graduated 40 years ago, uh, they had, you know, shut up. Only 40? <laughs> Only 40 years ago. Uh, you know, I, I, one of my best friends was in the masonry program, uh, and didn't his senior year, he, he wasn't on campus. He, he was over at Lake Tech learning masonry skills and engaging in competitions. And that was his, his life's work and has done quite well doing that. Yeah. It's really not available now. I mean, it, those outlets are not promoted as being socially desirable. Yes. And That's changing. That's that is absolutely changing. Though. Well, uh, if, if, I can tell you, maybe. even in the last five years, because uh, you know, five years ago, there was when you're looking at the state in terms of funding channels, no funding going to the tech schools. 
uh, or the state college. Uh, it's, it's depending on who you talk to, what you want to call. Now you're starting to see a shift, even with the state legislature, about let's get more money into, into the tech and the training schools. And we're starting to get rid of that stigma that if you don't go to college, you're a nobody. And that hey, actually the best route for a lot of kids is to go to that tech college, spend two years, get that certificate, and go out and start making a lot of money. And by the way, there's a there's a role for uh, not just the North Lake Tea Party, but anybody that's interested in this, any group or whoever, right now with legislation because what I hear in Tallahassee is that there's a emphasis, I think it might be mostly in the Senate, to put a lot of money to the to the University of Florida, FSU, uh, the, the, the five the five major universities, which is great. We all that's big we know that you understand the importance of that. But there's resistance to add additional four year programs at the local level, resistance to provide additional funding for some of these uh, dual, you know, two-year degree combined with the technical skill certificate. And that's something for us to watch, I think, and we, we need, need to definitely ask our legislators about that. So. Yeah, um, I was thinking of something. I don't know if you guys have thought about this, and if it's something that came up, you know, if we, if we go through this presentation, it's slick, it's great, all the data metrics are there, and you guys are government. You guys don't pay anybody. You, you, everything is tax dollars. But the critical, do you have a metric for how easy it is to do business in Lake County? For example, I'm a property owner. I want to sell something. I want to sell my property. I am a purchaser from another county. I want to purchase property. I want to build. You know, what a what government, what bureaucratic, what regulations, what obstacles am I going to have to navigate through? Do you guys have a metric for that and the, as it compares to other counties? Sure. I, I mean, there, there may be some out there. There are some, you know, everybody has tried to come up with some algorithm to put together tax rates and regulations and things. I haven't seen one that's consistent enough that we follow, but I'll tell you how we respond to that. So okay. we, we have... Um, the way we're structured is that we've got three coordinators that their job is to, they, and they're all assigned a region. So we have one for the northeast, which is the Golden Triangle, where we're sitting today, up to Umatilla and Sorrento. Northwest, Leesburg, Fruit Park, Lady Lake, and then South Lake. Uh, their job is to be out in the community on a day-to-day -day basis, meeting with businesses, going on site visits, so that they can get that feedback. So we don't have a metric per se, but what we have is a direct feedback loop with the actual businesses who are telling us, I've had a problem with X, Y, and Z. They bring that back, and then we spread that information across the county, whether it's going to the board. Here, let me give you a prime example of how this works. So from a, uh, the sign ordinance that we have, we heard from, in our site visits, we heard from multiple uh, sign installers that would say, you've got this landscaping requirement in your sign ordinance. We do not do landscaping. So we don't get paid until the CO is issued on a sign. The CO doesn't get issued on a sign until the landscaping is done. So they're held up, sometimes months, waiting for the contractor to actually get the exactly. landscaping. Exactly. I've known guys that have opened up small business, right. pizza shops and stuff. They have to wait exactly. 270 days. So you know what I'm talking about. To complete a permitting, you know, all the... the uh, da, 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 da. Right. No, so, 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 those, so those things come to us. It came in, and this is one that just happened. So it came up through one of our coordinators on a site visit. They bring that back. We go work with the sign ordinance. The commission just voted last board meeting to eliminate that piece of the sign ordinance. Okay, so a big part of it is to make sure that we continue to be out there, boots on the street, and it's all cliche, but it's true. It, it matters. Boots on the street, meeting with the folks in their businesses, building that trust and those relationships so that they can feel free to call us up and say, look, this regulation is killing me right now, and let's see if we can, and sometimes we can, and sometimes there's nothing we can do, sometimes the machine is what it is, but there's a lot of times when we can do stuff, you just use common sense, and you go and you say, why are we doing it this way? Because we've always done it that way. No, and I'll add a, I'll add a small, change it. I'll add a small note to that and say that, uh, the, that sometimes you can't do anything about it. it, is a frustration, keep in mind there's four building code, which is very stringent, and well, what I have stressed, in fact, I stressed this at our recent retreat, well, the one that we had in January, when we started talking about regulations, and we were taking, being business friendly very serious, 
don't profess to be perfect. There's mistakes. We're constantly learning and having to make changes. But what I have said is maybe we need to look and rethink and have our, our staff. Uh, maybe there's ways that it's being interpreted, and it could be interpreted in a different way. And by doing that, you save 30 days. But it gives the staff the ability to be able to uh, not feel feel like they're not um, you know they're not doing something unethical or against business code, which they take their practice very serious. They've got a license; they have to um, do things. There, essentially, what I'm saying is there are some people that we know that take it uh, a little too far, or maybe take the, you know the the way they interpret the book could be different, and and that perhaps we need to look at that and, and say. Be an advocate for the business first, give them the benefit of the doubt, work with them, try to speed the process up, interpret it that way. Yeah. No, we're not asking you to do something illegal. Good question. If some developer comes into the county and says, I want to build 9,000 homes, and most of the people living in that area don't want the 9,000, who decides? to let that developer build or not build? If that's within the city, it could be a city if they're annexing in, which uh, we are finding now is what they're doing. And I have a, I have my reason why that's uh, perhaps a whole other discussion. But if it's in the county, the county commission hears it. That would, it comes to us. It would go to planning and zoning first. The commission yes. decides whether that developer can build there regardless. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if it's required, if it, if it requires a zoning change and a future land use map amendment, it most certainly does require the approval of the county commission. But if they have entitlements today to do it, they don't, they don't need the county. And this, this is where we, what you don't see, and then this goes back to the, the numbers, that number that he put up. I we can't stress this enough. You can, you can, we can stand by and not do anything and let, let the status quo go. And you will essentially have what we have had uh, in Lake County, in my opinion, and probably others too, where you have piecemeal growth. So the landowner has a growth that greening skilled it or a freeze in 1989 killed it or whatever, and they want to do something with it. What's the, what's the best way to do that? And stay underneath the, the, the radar and say, you know, we go with the lowest common denominator. The easiest thing to do is break it off 10 acres, 15, 20 acres at a time plotted as a subdivision, it doesn't come in front of the county commission. So we can't hear you. We can't say that isn't that isn't uh, we're not against that, but we need to work, we need to plan this a little bit better. Because it never comes in front of us. It meets a minimum criteria and then it is approved. So that's why we're that's why the planning side at the local level is is uh, it is important and it's important for you to be involved with that. It's a very uh, at the risk of going off uh, too much here, it, it, I understand it is very uh, esoteric, convoluted, and very frustrating for people. But um, it's important to be a part of that. Uh, I, if I could just make one comment, um, having been an elected official, I think you have touched on it uh, twice now, Sean. Uh, something that's going to be very critical moving forward for all of us is that there are 14 municipalities. And if they don't start getting along better with the county and vice versa, right. you're going to have more issues than Carter has little baby pills. And so I think it's critical, like you were discussing, that that conversation be carried a whole lot further than it ever has been in this county. No, thank you. Yes, you have many years served for you, Matilda. Thank you, Peter. Yes. Um, your presentation is great for the landowners and developers. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, come to our side. We own homes here. We're retired. Um, you haven't even talked about schools needed, roads needed, uh, all of the other things that the county and the cities provide. It's right here. Okay. I mean, I didn't go into detail because we, we didn't have a lot of time. But it, that's my fault. I told him to put it in. That's, that's, that's over, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's our infrastructure. Yeah. That, that, that's all, that's Incredibly important. Yes. The, the, the thing that uh, worries me, and it looks like it's already happened a couple of years ago, where the county and some of the cities are just raising our taxes to pay for all this stuff. If there's development in this county, then it ought to be the developers, it ought to be the people that are moving, <laughs> buying new homes and everything. They should pay for their own infrastructure. Because we have infrastructure here already. All we have to do is maintain it. Correct. But it's it's 
really bad, you're going to afford, I mean, there, there's only one person left that raised their taxes 14%, okay? Now, it is important that the people that are already here don't have to fund the developers that are going to come in here and they're gone. After they're done, they're gone. They made their money and they're gone. We're left to pay all of the bills. So somebody needs to make sure that they watch out for the people that are already here. And that they, I mean, I, I understand what, you get big complaints when you charge somebody $10,000 to build a house. But I mean, it goes to schools, it goes to roads, it goes to everything else. If that's what it costs to build a house, with the infrastructure included, they ought to be charged. I mean, maybe they're not going to make as much money, and maybe they're not going to build it. Well, if that's the case, then our county doesn't grow as much. We actually get to enjoy the county the way it is now a little bit. So, if, I mean, we don't want to, as taxpayers and people that live here already, especially if we're retired, have to come in and fund their developments. So, I hope that, I mean, you can see that there was an impact on this 14% tax increase. Yes, sir. And the developers need to pay, if they want to come in here and make money by developing something, building a house, because people need to move here, then let them pay the total costs of the infrastructure and not have the taxpayers of the county pay so they can make more money. And I'll, I'll just, if you don't mind, uh, comment just a little bit to sure. that. And coming in uh, to, to service in 2010 uh, as your commissioner, I'll tell you that um, we were way behind that. Uh, the impact fees, and, and by the way, I agree with you with the impact fees. And even Vance knows this. He's been doing enough for the commission meetings. I agree. They are what they are. I don't like them, but but it, it, it's the cost, the $10,000 number, that's what it costs for the, literally for the square footage of space to have the housing, a new child that is coming into Lake County. It is what it is. And the same thing goes with roads. And so that's why, you know, I, I, I support that. I totally agree. The problem has been that that was not done for literally 20-something years, the full impact fee. You know, we had, we had uh, gradations of it. It was at 50%, the 50% level at one time. You know, for a number of years, and we did put it on. We put a moratorium on that for two years, uh, and, and, and that, you know, for, at that time the, the economy was so bad, not much was happening. Uh, but nevertheless, we are behind. We have been behind, and we are we are just constantly in a state of being behind. And if you if you look at the numbers, and Robert will agree, of course, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've been so reliant upon the residential growth. And those numbers that you hear, so you probably know this, you're a pretty savvy crowd. The, the, the dollar that uh, is brought in from revenue, uh, pro uh, specifically property taxes uh, on residential property, really, we have to put out about a dollar, anywhere from a dollar twenty to a dollar sixty worth of services. Now that number goes down when you get uh, some of the higher end residential and different circumstances can bring that number down. So um, what I'm leading up to is, Orange County, for instance, um, they can, you know, they can keep their millage rate constant. They kept, they've kept it the same millage rate for years, 20 years probably. I mean, I may, I'm not sure exactly, but let's just say a long time. And they do that because of their business balance, the balance of the mix of business that they have. The obviously having Disney really helps as well. And and, and so that we don't have that mix, and so we're we're dealt with. I'm, I sound like I'm whining now, but the commissioners are dealt a, a losing deck in that sense where it is what it is, but we, we have lots of residential and lots of residential growth, but not a lot of business. And so that makes it very hard. It's been a perpetual state of trying to catch up with public services that are needed. The 100,000 people that came within 10 years, I mean, that's, that's pretty, that's been pretty hard to do. That's been pretty hard to keep up with. And, then, and by the way, the tax rate, I mean, that's, the property tax rate is, is about the same. I mean, yes, it went up 14%, but, it, you know, it's been within that range, even, you know, between 1999 and, and, and 2000, when we did this in 2014. So, but I, I, I understand that, and I know it's, um, 
And there's been some, you know, personally, there's been some lessons learned on that budget process. But, uh, you know, I, I would still tell you, just to be direct with you, I'd still tell you that, that, that uh, uh, had that not been done, or at least something had been done, we would, there would be, you know, some serious, there would have been serious cuts. So, and I, we can go through the budget, and I want you to all be a part of the budget process that's coming up. We're having even more workshops this coming year than, we, than we've ever had in the past. And you can see, I mean, really, our discretionary part of the budget is, is, is minimal now at this point. Um, so, you know, we, unless we start working, unless we start asking the sheriff, for instance, to cut, and, and it's, that's, about, that's about 50. And, you know, you know, if that's the case, you all have to help us do that because, you know, he's hearing, the sheriff has always heard, and I believe this, he does a great job. Public, if you have a low crime rate, and I know I'm, I'm, I, I, I'll get the question, but I know if, if let's just, the risk going off on a tangent, um, if, if you have a high crime rate, which, and, and I live in a very different district, the district that I live in, District 2, is very different than, say, District 4 or 5. So I, I've got more, uh, the, the families coming in, the, end of the let's, we'll talk political registration, more of the independents and the Democrats coming in. Um, if you were so close to Orlando, if, if, there, if there is a lack of focus for just a year, these criminals are very smart. They know where enforcement is it, and where it is not. If there is a lack of focus and prevention, even between the county and, and the cities, we're not working together, crime goes up. You talk about a way to, to uh, forget about any chances of having relocations. I mean, that's, that's where people, businesses get out. And, and so, you know, we have to, we have to support the sheriff and, and our police departments as well. The same thing goes with public safety and fire. So I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, and I, it's complicated is what I'm trying to say, but, um, and at the same time, yes, when growth is, growth is coming, there's going to be another 100,000 people within the next 10 years, 12 years. And uh, we have a great, there's a thousand people a day moving to Florida. We have a great business environment in Florida. Yes, we work, are working to change that and improve upon it. But it starts at the state. We give them credit for that, too. Um, and, and that's why people are moving here. So well, I, I guess to follow up a little bit on the question, it's not the, it's not the amount of money that it costs to have the services we need. It's the extra stuff. It's the infrastructure. It's the development that's coming in. It causes it to even get worse because now you're talking about a crime. Now you're talking about other stuff. These people should pay that cost that it costs to develop it completely and not let the people that are, especially, I mean, I mean, when you raise it 14%, that's not all that gets raised because it goes up 3% a year just because everything costs Okay, well, if you're on a fixed income, you can't keep going for 20 years like that. So what you're doing is you're forcing the retired people to leave, to go to a county that's not growing, to be able to afford to live. So um, you, I think you need to t take care of the people that are here now and the people that are coming in. If they think this is a great place to live, they'll pay more for it because they don't want to live in Orlando. But you shouldn't make everybody in the county pay to have them move in. No, I, I agree. And you know, but there's, there's, again, there's, there's a lot that I can't help. I mean, when an apartment complex is built and it was approved 10 or 15 years ago, and they're building it now, and you've got 300 families, they don't pay. They pay very little taxes, but yet they're the ones using the road and making 10 or 15 trips a day. So, how, how come those things are approved 14 years ago without any changes now when they come in and it's now cost more money? Different commission. Well, I know. Different commission. I mean, this ought to run out. If somebody gets something that they plan a, a new um, apartment complex, they've got three years to build it. If they don't have it done in three years, they've got to come back again. they got to pay more costs. Things are more expensive now. We, we do have that built in a lot now. We've made that. And there are yeah. termination dates. We have to come back into the yeah. we got. We can't do. It's a chicken and an egg, it seems to me like. Exactly. Unless we have the industry here and the jobs to attract the upscale people that can afford to buy those homes and to pay those taxes, 
and make you move. If you're, if you're a burger flipper, you're not going to be able to buy that home. Yeah. And, and if we just try to live off the service people that's here to take care of us retired people, then we're going to have burger flippers and they're living here and the crime rate's going to be higher. And, and, and exactly. all the problems that go along with that. So it's kind of a chicken and an egg. And that's why I asked the targeting question, who are we going to fish for? You know, just throw a hook in the water. No, you got to you got to go after clean, high tech, build a high tech corridor, and, and, and solicit those people, you know, from Silicon Valley or from uh, wherever they are, Ireland, <laughs> and bring them here and set them up and, and make it nice for them so that they can. Exactly. That's, there's a lot of talent in Damascus that's 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 to get out. Yeah. Sarah, we got a question back here. Sarah, yeah. so, I'm here. Yes, go. <laughs> One of the things that came to my mind when I was watching it, and you just touched on it a minute ago, what kind of folks are, are we sending these messages to that we want to bring to Lake County? Many of us are here because, or we're lucky enough to stumble upon it, because it's a conservative, Republican place that we like. It's a lot of rural, it's not a lot of, I don't want to live in Orlando. And so it seems to me that when you look for manufacturing or whatever, we need to keep that. We don't want to change our demographic. Right. No, I, I think that's crazy. No, and that's good. Y'all won't be in no the commission anymore. Yeah, and that's that's a good that's a that's a good we good question and, and a comment. We could talk about that as well for a long a long time. But I, I would tell you, look at look at the and again Robert knows this. Um, look at um, with manufacturing, yes, I think uh, manufacturing, let's just say make a generalization that yeah, they're probably more conservative, uh, the work of con the manufacturing workers. But we're also targeting uh, in innovation, we're targeting targeting healthcare. And if you look at the numbers, and I look, I look at these numbers, a lot of the, the you, you know this, this is going to be a problem for, for conservatives. Um, You're attracting young you, you know, you, but you, you know this, that, that the, the ones that are registering to vote, I mean, it's it's so lopsided. They all register as non-party. Uh, maybe next is Democrat, and then below that would be maybe, maybe conservative. Now, Why don't we advertise that we're a conservative yeah. Republican county? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I can tell you, for, we, yeah. we don't recruit people. Right. So let's be clear about that. We're not recruiting demographics. We're recruiting high wage jobs. That's what we're at. Yeah, and, and so whatever whatever those high wage jobs are, whether it's manufacturing or technology or healthcare, that's what we're recruiting. I'm, I'm not. I don't care. Me personally, I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. I don't care who you are. If you're going to bring in a job that's going to pay somebody a lot of money, I want you here. So that's I'm, my goal. But I we say don't care when we turn blue. Well, as a side, <laughs> but, but that's that's that's, that's, that's kind of that's not my that's uh, his is different. But that's not my goal. My goal is to have high-paying jobs in Lake County for all the residents. Because you don't care if your money's coming from a Republican or a Democrat. You just care if I get my check every week. Correct. Now, now I will say as a side note. You're, now you're talking about something that has have become has become very uh, very much of interest to me, and that is reaching the kids that are in high school now. And I've started I'm going to, to do high school. Peter knows this. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get and, and go to teach just this one day. That's about all I can handle. But the <laughs> civics class. You make it go uh, white here. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yes, yes, it did. It does. Being, but but and telling them uh, and showing them here's what. Um, when you're conservative, uh, what it means if you are going to try to start a business, how that will impact you with conservative policies in place. It's more that you, you are going to, you're going to be better off with conservative policies in place. You have this idea to save the world with your new, with your new you know, uh, technology that you're going to invent or your app. You, you're going to be better off with conservative policies in place and a place that's business friendly. Um, and, and that's something that I think we can do, and I, it's of interest to me. Again, I know it's a side conversation as well. These are a lot of good points, but yes. In terms of the funding, which is a, you know a, an important aspect of it, in terms of paying concurrent costs of, of, of expansion, one of the weaknesses of the four sectors that were listed during your presentation, 
and I'll echo everybody else, it was very well done. And the first one was healthcare. And as we learned, at least I did, with the uh, healthcare uh, health tax in the North Lake hospital district, hospital district last uh, uh, cycle, they tend to be not for profits, and so they often are not major mm -hmm. contributors. Mm -hmm. As although they are huge suction devices for the infrastructure in terms of their infrastructure demands. Yeah. Uh, and, but they're not paying property taxes commensurate with the, the amount of consumption. Sales and and, and this, that's problematic. I'm not, I'm, not, you know, I'm not raining on the healthcare industry. I'm just saying that's a factor that we need to look at and see how we might be able to ameliorate it or reduce it. Well, let me, tell, let me take one specific example. Um, with uh, maybe maybe more what we're thinking about, not necessarily like get the whole hospital thing. I think it's crazy some of the, the costs that they have. Uh, it's a, a, amazing when I can look at a bill and it, my child goes and his tonsils out and it's nine thousand dollars, and I don't understand for two hours. That's literally what it was. We I'll take the company. Their logo was up on the presentation. Vista Labs, mm -hmm. awesome American story. Two veterans uh, about my age. Um, you know, 29-ish, so... <laughs> yeah, right, they, right. They, uh, they decided to... Now we know how we got those statistics. They found a way to approve the, pro the process of uh, lab testing blood and, and doing lab tests at Baptist Hospital. And the short of it is, is they decided to break off on their own. And they came to the little old Mineola in South Lake. And I remember they went and they, they, they was at a Christmas party in 2003 with them. And they had just set up and they were in this almost like rental-like facility. And they were telling me about this business, and I thought, okay, good luck. It sounds good. They have 300, 300, well, they probably have more employees, and I know they have at least 300 employees now to this day. They're based in Claremont. And they, their goal was to compete with Vista, with LabQuest, LabCorp. Um, that's who we really want. We want them to stay here. And they flirted with going to Orange County at one point, Roberts, and we have stepped in, and that's the recruiting, and they... The, the, you know, you've heard the phrase, uh, there's, you're, you guys are just cheerleaders. Well, yeah, we're, I'll admit it, we're cheerleaders a lot of times. We have to go and we have to cheerlead and say, I love you, you guys are great, we love you, we want you, please stay here. And, and, and they stay here. Now, interestingly enough, with that, that specific example, Robert talked about uh, availability of land. They were very interested in Wellness Way and for many years, for two years. They waited and waited and waited. They're not waiting anymore because they can't. They can't wait any longer. So they're not going to be visit, building the 100,000 square foot lab that they want a testing facility where all blood and all the not just blood, but every everything that they're doing comes from the southeast to this location. Uh, they are not going to be doing that in a wellness way. They're going to be they're they're going to be doing it in uh, to a smaller scale uh, to another facility in Claremont in, in hopes of. Maybe this wellness way will open up, but the, it, it put a it put a kink in their plans for sure, um, and they were legitimately ready to go into wellness way. Robert knows this, so we haven't been able to get that availability up, and that is a, that is a problem. And that's why, as I have said, planning is important. Like Nona, the place is Innovation Way. That they they started thinking about this stuff 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I mean, I, wellness way, I won't see. I'll, I'll be I'll be out of that office. I mean. You know, that's that's a long way off still. But you gotta you gotta get it in place and you gotta start planning for having that availability of uh, the land, otherwise you don't well, otherwise I, you won't get it. And two two Make other pieces to that. So it's help it's help. Make known it is failing. Uh, the, uh, it's not failing. It's, it's not failing. Burnham is leaving because of lack of federal dollars. And they thought they were going to get UF to come in, but that's just one project. I mean, USTA, their headquarters just got launched there. The Veterans Hospital is still there. Nemours is still there. It's far from failing. I mean, they had a hiccup with Burnham, uh, but it's, uh, I wouldn't say it was failing. No, it's not. Uh, what would it take to springboard them? What would it take to springboard them? Yeah. I mean, I'd say they're already there. Or somebody like that. Yeah, but, well, I mean, that's that's kind of the wellness way deal. Yeah. Workforce and availability. Yeah. Plans. But, but. Two pieces back to your point about healthcare, and I, and I agree with you generally, but 
One is, you know, we're also, it's not just hospitals, it's the life sciences. So it's things like VISTA, it's other things where you take that human capital that's already in the healthcare industry and you can shift them over to technology-based life sciences or to manufacturing life sciences or whatever the case may be. And two, yeah, you're right that there, there are a lot of nonprofits, but they're also paying a lot of money to people who are working in their facilities that then go and spend that money in the county. So there is a ripple effect of those, those high salaries and the spend element of, of what the healthcare side is doing. So sorry, I just want to respond to that. This sure. will be our last question. Sean's been very kind. Uh, 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 let, me, let me interrupt. No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yours will be the last question. And then we'll then I can wrap it up. Um, I'd like to make a statement. Oh, yeah, that works too. Well, it depends. It's not a question, so you get another question after that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Sean and, and the presenter for providing a very good presentation. And somehow we've managed to take your half an hour presentation and build it into two hours. But what I'd like to do is to say thank you and give Sean an opportunity to cover those agenda items that you brought, you mentioned at the early part. I will do that. Thank, thank you. you. Well. Yeah. Thank you. I will do that. He does work for, I mean, he works for, for us, but he works for you. So when you have questions and you want to get information, you can reach out to him. So reach out for me. Let me hit the, let me hit, I'll do this like really fast, fast press off, fast break offense, um, real quick. County manager search, extremely important. There's nothing perhaps that this commission can do at this point more important than find the county manager the leader. And I mean that, that's the first qualification number one. To me. I don't want a manager, I want a leader. You have a drop dead date. Uh, we have a drop dead date, June 1st. June 1st at 5 o'clock, um, David Heath is out, out the door. So that process is underway. I want uh, a leader, I want somebody that will support staff. And my biggest uh, peeve right now is understanding that you pay taxes. And I, I have been talking about value. Uh, what's important to me is a bureaucracy, reducing bureaucracy. I have instances I had on a list here, I can tell you some of which have been very frustrating to me. And, uh, and, and Robert knows, so it's, you know, I wouldn't be saying something that would make him uncomfortable. Uh, but it's problems are within our system that we need to improve on, and I'm looking for the manager to take care of that. There's no reason why decisions are made. Some decisions that have been made take six to eight months to actually implement. So. That's going to be very important for me, as well as the innovation of being business friendly, also obviously very important. But that person who's selected won't get past five, the four or the five commissioners. They'll have to demonstrate that. There'll be a lot of candidates that will demonstrate that. We have some good qualified candidates that have applied already. So we're going to be doing interviews in about a month. And you certainly should feel free to weigh in uh, as to what you think we need to be looking for. The EMS uh, audit report. Um, presentation was made, the emergency medical system, Lake EMS uh, services, your ambulance, uh, that uh, study has finally come back in, and it does suggest that, as Commissioner Campion and I, Campion and I have suggested for a couple of years now, that uh, it does make sense and it is more efficient to provide in some areas, uh, particularly the more rural areas, uh, have Lake County Fire and Rescue do the transport. So that will be implemented this coming year. We're doing part two to look to see if there's more efficiencies uh, in other parts of the county. Um, the impact fee waiver program, uh, that's the infill program. Uh, Commissioner Campion has presented to the school district for some select areas, infill areas that uh, are vacant lots within urban areas of the county close to the cities that could become exempt. Um, and we would have to pay that somehow. Um, us in the school district to waive those fees. That will be on the agenda coming up, I think, within a couple months. Uh, within the next, it's going to be in May. It'll be in May. Um, better intergovernmental coordination, as Peter has said, we know this. He's serving the city, I'm serving at the county. There are instances where you, the resident, whether you live in a city, particularly if you live in a city and are paying an additional level of taxes, you need to be asking the question. Um, of the city, can you work with the county? Uh, is there is there cost savings by um, working together? The same thing goes for the county as well. We need to be partnering with the cities. And I don't see this in North Lake so much. I will say that I see this more in South Lake, particularly within the past year. There is a little bit of this going on, and we that 
that's going to be a, a something that I'm going to do this year is to do my part to make that better. Blaming between city and county, uh, more in the South Lake. Uh, we would love you, Matilda has been always been a good, a good city partner. Now I'm not just saying it because he's here, but they've never, they're not who we're talking about. Robert knows it's more of the South Lake right now. So, um, and that when when that happens, then the finger pointing and the bureaucracy and the people wanting to be in control, just being honest, with the control thing, you are not well served. So we have to we have to change that. And I have to be a part of that as well. Uh, the workshop again, as I've said, we've got we have even more than planned this year. And yes, unfortunately, Vance does go. Um, believe it or not. Unfortunately, unfortunately or unfortunately, Vance goes. No, he's always he's always pretty good. So we beat on him a little bit sometimes, and he beats on us. So it's all in good fun, right? Most of the time. <laughs> Jimmy's gone. It's life of you know, <laughs> daisies now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's quieter, yes, I'm sure it's, it, it's not as fun. Spent, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I we want you to be a part of that. One thing I'm going to ask, particularly of the new, the new county managers, is to start doing meetings uh, at different locations. So you don't have to come here at 9 a.m. Um, on Tuesday, you could, we would perhaps have meetings once in a while at a different locations, maybe even in the evening. So I hope that that happens. Um, House Bill 17, I would encourage you to follow. That could affect your city and the counties if that is passed. That will limit, takes away any regulatory power of the city or the county if it passes from regulating businesses. That might, might sound pretty good, especially if you live in certain cities, perhaps in South Florida, maybe Winter Park, something like that. But there, basically, what that means is that um, if you don't want adult entertainment or you don't want um, you know some industry that has, we have a licensing process for adult entertainment. So you can come in constitutionally, we're told constitutionally we have to allow it, but we regulate it. We say only in certain areas, certain criteria, and you got to pay a license fee. Um, if this passes, the state would handle that. So I, I, I don't think it's something that they want to do. I don't know what the, I know the intent is to, is to rein in some of the out of control cities and, and perhaps counties, but I, I really think that could be very bad. And we'll, I, I would encourage you to watch that. And that, that if we are as a county commission, we're watching that bill as well as a few others too. So, and other than that, um, I know I'm going way over. And in, into the second round of basketball games tonight, I'm not sure. But it has been a been a pleasure, and I certainly can can take any more questions. But uh, have me back. Have me back. And, okay. Yes. I've got one. Uh, I'm my concern with the EMS transition to having the rural areas being taken care of by the fire department, as soon as that happens, those positions become in, uh, under a unionized, different pension process. So they become very costly compared to the EMS system in the fire department. So tread carefully, my friend, because once once that camel's nose is under the tent, bingo, you're going to have a whole different culture delivering people uh, simple things well taken and it always in that sense you're right we have to pay attention to the numbers if this is within one or two years more possible we should not do it but the expansion will for it once it starts it will expand yes always does and when that happens the whole ems system gets turned out as it really is it's uh, uh, i'm in favor of efficiencies but i don't see that as a, a long-term efficiency it's a short-term savings for a long-term painful process. I've seen it happen elsewhere, so be careful. Don't, don't be too anxious to you would, I could, Can I point you to the fire advisory board that I want to set up? Well, I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the fire board here in, in Florida, in uh, Tiberi, so I'd be happy to do that. Okay. All right. Fine. Uh, recently, board meeting staff who will rename Remain. Right. Now, staff gave a presentation on a program called PACE. I believe you are one of the three uh, uh, commissioners that uh, uh, supported that, and there was no description or anything on it. It was a program brought to you that's in some other counties and cities, and it was to the result is that it would let 
uh, remodelers and home improvement salespeople like roofers and solar, solar roof panel firms run their financing through the tax collector. Can you give me the rationale why you would do that? Well, I will start by saying that uh, I or the other two voted to approve that yet. I know, we yes. To approve or not, and that's the optimal. Uh, what, we, what we voted on was to have them come back and answer, first of all, answer some, some key questions about how, um, uh, how they're going to be qualified, how the, the person that uh, would apply for this, they would be, be qualified. And if they're not, in other words, the question is, if I can't get a, if I have a really bad credit rating and I can't get a roofer to it. Then the county would be the collector on it. Then they, then, and those are the questions, Vince, that we're going to get answered. We're right. going to be looking at that. And that's, that's, they know that that's a, that has to be answered for me. Now, it's not just a, it's not just a, um, and I'll just wrap this up real quick with, the, with that particular issue. It's not as simple as um, any old contractor, by the way, can do this. There's a very, they have to, it's a, it's a stringent process that they apply to become a contractor that's uh, certified for and then once you get it, it's on the tax rolls, and the tax collector has to collect it as a lien against the property, and it includes solar roof panels, which is a huge problem in other states, and it's just starting here. So I'll, I'll, I'll be watching that. <laughs> no, that, and that, that, that's fair. I mean, that's a, I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, convinced either. I mean, I'm, I'm interested because of what I've seen happen in other counties by the way, a lot of your local businesses actually support it. So, well, yeah, because it gets financing they're, they're when, it, when so. they can't get real credit. They get financing that we end up, the taxpayers and the tax collector, is collecting the money for. True. Yes. Okay. I think we'll let Marie do the drawing now for our Great. door okay. prizes and yes. let her come up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.